science fans, and welcome to Sciencia. Our topic for today are Philippine ex-heroes who deserve more recognition. We have just celebrated the 122nd anniversary of the Philippine Declaration of Independence from 333 years of Spanish colonial rule. Often, this holiday is used to celebrate the heroes who fought during the Spanish War, World War II, and other various foreign and local aggressors. In the 21st century, we are unearthing more and more unsung heroes who are not as popular as our Rizals and Bonifacios. So for today, we will be looking at the life and service of these Philippine ex-heroes. Starting with Teresa Magbanwa. Teresa Magbanwa, born in 1868 in Pototan, Iloilo, was a school teacher. She was highly educated as befitted her social class, but this did not make her entitled enough not to care for her fellow Filipinos. Magbanwa was highly educated, having studied at Colegio de Santa Rosa in Intramuros, Manila, Santa Catalina College in Sampaloc, Manila, and finally at Colegio de Doña Cecilia where she finally earned a teaching degree. She didn't stop there though and earned a master's degree from the University of Santo Tomas before going back home to Pototan to teach in their local schools. She could have retired in comfort after marrying a wealthy landlord, but when war broke out, she defied both her husband and her guardian uncle and joined the Katipunan. Known as the Visayan Joan of Arc, she commanded a battalion of Bolo troops and led thousands of men on horseback, winning battle after battle against Spanish forces. Nay Isai, as she was fondly called by her troops, even won over roving bandits that looted towns during that time. She remained militant even during the Philippine-American War where she fought to protect Haro Iloilo and tried out guerrilla tactics when the regional headquarters fell. As a farmer, she and her husband fed Filipino troops during the Japanese occupation. She died in 1947, a year after the Philippine flag was raised after we were granted independence from American rule. She had no children as her troops were her wards so she lived a simple, quiet life in Zamboanga with her sister after her husband died. Her death had no fanfare and she wasn't buried in any special grave. And it is quite ironic that very few actually know about the contributions of this amazing woman. Jos Buhawi The bravery of the underrepresented goes even way back, even during Spanish colonization. As we know of Ponciano Elofre, to be later known as Jos Buhawi, or the God of the Whirlwind. Jos Buhawi's revolutionary activities began when Spanish soldiers beat Buhawi's father to death for not being able to collect all the taxes of their neighborhood in Negros. Leading troops from their barangay called Zamponguita, Jos Buhawi fought for religious freedoms and served as the babaylan of their community. The role of Babaylan was originally exclusive only for women who are known for their broad knowledge of early ethnobotany that were believed to be supernatural. Biologically male Babaylans were called Asog, who have the wisdom and power of females but lack their ability to reproduce. The recognition of Asog from the previously exclusively female role of Babaylan started a phase where the gay community at that time earned their own crown of leadership. And Jos Buhawi continued breaking both local and western imposed gender norms by wearing skirts while leading 2,000 babaylanes or followers in faith and in battle. The activities and military successes of Jos Buhawi so bothered the government at that time that the governor general sent 500 Guardia Civil and a battleship to Negros in order to capture Jos Buhawi. Jos Buhawi passed away during this encounter in August 22, 1887. Nieves Fernandez Mom Nieves Fernandez was a school teacher who gave up her chalk and blackboard in Tacloban Leyte to fight against the Japanese during their occupation of the Philippines. We might not have known of her if she wasn't featured in an American newspaper 
in their fascination of how a school ma'am led guerrilla troops in battle. Not quite as motherly as the stereotypical Filipina heroine, she trained more than 110 soldiers in guerrilla tactics, and she was known for her efficient methods of beheading Japanese soldiers. With amazing skills as an improvised engineer, her troops were known for making grenades and guns from gas pipes called latongs. U.S. intelligence later revealed that Japanese troops offered 10,000 pesos for her head, showing her effectiveness and notoriety as a military leader. Her troops were known for liberating war prisoners and comfort women. Capitan Fernandez lived up to a ripe old age of 91. She humbly lived her life in her beloved Tacloban city and had three sons. Her remains lie in humble grave with Filipinas like me wishing there was more known about this amazing woman. Lola Polonia A war is not needed in order for someone to be a hero. One can fight against repressive norms to gain acceptance and to allow for the freedom to express your own identity. And this was the case for Crispolo Trinidad Luna, born in 1903 in Pampanga, but grew up in Orani, Bataan. Pulong, as she would prefer to be called, pushed gender norms when her family moved to Paco, Manila, and she discovered Victoria Studios. Pulong eventually bloomed into the LGBTQ community's version of a supermodel and cover girl at that time. She posed in exquisite garb, ranging from the classic barot saya to the more exotic geisha outfits. She even found love and lived with her partner, Juan, who was a master carpenter. Unable to marry her love, she moved in with her siblings after her partner's death, and Lola Polonia, as she was called by her siblings' children, passed away in May 1970. She was as brave as she was fabulous, fighting for her right for self-expression during the time when the LGBTQ community was actively being silenced. I hope that she is happy and proud that hailing from the region where she was born is one of the first LGBTQ representatives in the Congress. Maria Orosa Touted as probably the first world-recognized Filipina scientist, Maria Orosa was born in Taal, Batangas in 1892. With a government scholarship and possibly stowing away in a ship, Maria Orosa earned a bachelor's and master's degree in pharmaceutical chemistry and in food chemistry from the University of Washington in Seattle. Recognizing her genius, the Washington state government offered her a job as a chemist, but she refused this and promptly after graduation, she went home to the Philippines. Orosa wanted to help the Philippines become self-sufficient as well as empower Filipino families. She made agriculture sexy as she traveled around the barrios teaching women how to grow their own food and raise chickens. All the while inventing the palayok oven, calamansi powder, wines from different local fruits, and the infamous banana ketchup. And during World War II, instead of leaving Manila for the relative safety of Batangas, she stayed and became a captain of a guerrilla troop. And while fighting skirmishes and rescuing prisoners of war, she also invented low-cost, high-nutrient food alternatives to keep the troops full and healthy. She died in February 1945 after being hit by a shrapnel during one of the skirmishes. Her family didn't even know where she was buried, and her tomb was only discovered this year, almost 75 years after her death. The Filipina and the LGBTQ community of the Philippines have been fighting side by side against oppression for hundreds of years, while fighting against biases that have kept us in the shadows. But no more. It is time for us and our heroes to be celebrated. Let us call for unity, let us call for respect, and let us call for equality. Not just in actions, but in legislation that would allow our fellow women and our fellow members of the LGBTQ community to live a full and happy life. I hope you were able to learn something from the short video showcasing the battles of our Philippine ex-heroes. Shiensha stands in solidarity with the LGBTQ community 
in the fight to ensure that love will prevail. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!